What's up guys? In this, in this series of tutorial, I'll be sharing with you how to create your experiment in JS site. So JS site is a JavaScript library for running behavior experiments in a web browser. And it provides a flexible framework for building all kinds of experiments, such as cognitive experiments, tasks, surveys, and so on and so forth. So you can create um, text-based experiments, you can put in audio, images, links to all other HTML sites and create all kinds of services you wish in this JSI package. So this is the JSI um, website. So there are lots of stuff with tutorials, the basic stuff and how to create an experiment. So this tutorial series is based on the demo experiment on how to create a simple reaction time task. So it's for those who prefer to watch videos and learn along with doing it, rather than um, by uh, looking at uh, um, text and looking at um, websites without understanding how things go through or things are done in um, the program or in other web um, development um, framework. So there are also other options like um, for trials, for your experiments, how to load media such as videos and audio files, and how to put um, put your experiment on full screen, uh, and putting in integrating with MTurk for those who are running experiments on MTurk, and there are also options for you to run it and uh, host it in other websites such as GitHub, um, Heroku, um, and also integrating with Quartrix, because um, most universities have Quartrix and and how and we run a, a lot of people run experiments, especially survey experiments on Quartrix. So JSIC is allows you to integrate your experiments in Quartrix so that you can run both surveys and tasks in Quartrix itself. So in this tutorial, uh, we will learn how to create your first um, part of the experiment, which is the welcome screen. <coughs> Sorry, I'm coughing. So, um, first we have to download JS site. So let's go to GitHub and download JS site. I'm gonna put it in desktop and I'm gonna extract to a JS site tutorial. So I created a project directory called JSI tutorial. So you should also do the same uh, and could do it in any other folder, uh, any other directory you want, but create a directory for your project. So you don't mix up with other projects uh, while you're creating one. So once that is done, the next thing we need is a <coughs> um, editor. So you could um, download Adam editor. So there is also a visual code editor, visual studio, I think, studio code editor. So there's Adam editor, you can download it, it's free. There's visual studio code, which is also free. Um, uh, those who don't code like me, um, I don't code in JavaScript, I don't code in HTML, I don't code CSS. So I'm not um, familiar with all these uh, programs or editors or IDEs, but what I use is WebStorm. So you can uh, you can use WebStorm. It's a 30 day free trial, uh, but I have the um, education version, so I got it for free. Um, this is what I use. So, but you can use any other editors if you want. So over here, I'm gonna focus more on using um, WebStorm. So now we have our um, JSI um, package in here. I'm gonna rename it. Let's call refactor rename. I'm gonna call it JS. It just it's just to make things easier to know where I put my JavaScript files. Um, and then I'm gonna move CSS out of this folder because it's not a JavaScript file. 
So JavaScript is a kind of other stuff. So let's go back. Um, so let's look at what um, JSI has. So there are lots of um, information here about the packages, about um, README, if you want to know what this. Um, <coughs> okay, so I'm loading Adam here, not intended. So this is what you see in um, the GitHub site. So they put it here, um, it's a README file. So we have code of conduct. I'm going to open it here. See if you can open it. Yes, I can. So a good thing about WebStorm I like is we have a code here and you can see the markdown um, format. So we're not interested in that. Uh, what we're interested in is the examples. So if you're new like me, um, do you, you see so many functions like um, these plugins are the functions they're going to use, like uh, create a response um, button. So you respond to an audio and then press a button. Respond to an audio by pressing a keyboard. Respond by a, respond to a text by pressing a button. Put you to full screen. Um, surveys um, and all that. So if you just click on something like um, keyboard response, so we have no idea what this is at this moment. You have no idea how it works, but it's okay. We don't have to know at this point because there are examples we can look at corresponding to what this function does. So this is HTML keyboard response. Looks like a um, long piece of code. You have no idea what it does, but in, in a while, you will know um, how to code in this way. So let's just run this to see what it does. So this is a HTML keyboard button. So response to a text and press a button. So you can press Y or Y or N. So the color match, the word, no. Does the color match? Yes. The response allowed two seconds wait. And at the end, you see all this. Um, this is the data that comes out from um, JS site. Um, we'll get to this later on, but not at this moment. So let's get back. Um, so this is a huge line of code. But here, we're more interested in how to create um, a simple screen. So let's start by, let's get started. Let's create a new file and create a HTML file here. So because this is the main um, framework that we're using to create JS experiment. So let's call it index. So it's the home page. <coughs> I think I may, might not have shared this with you. Um, not have, might not have said it already, but in um, Web development, there are three kinds of three components the HTML, the CSS, and the JavaScript. So you can think of HTML like a skeleton. So this is the framework where you put all your text inside, and JavaScript is the interactivity and the functions of um, the web page, okay. and CSS are the decorators. So think of it like um, <coughs> skeleton. HTML is a skeleton. JSI, uh, or the JavaScript are the organs that allows the body to function. <coughs> and CSS are the decorators, which are like the skin, the facial features and all that, that makes up um, the appearance of the human body. <coughs> so now we have the HTML site, uh, HTML index. So the title is the title that's gonna be shown on top of the header on top of the web browser, let's call it my experiment. <clears throat> so now we have um, the title. We need to know what functions to use and how to retrieve those functions and put it into this page. And we can do that um, by script. So this is calling the JavaScript get a source where this script is located at. 
and then close. You close it by slash. <laughs> so I'm gonna call a JavaScript. JS site is located here. So JS slash JS site dot JS. So we have our first Java, um, we have loaded our first JavaScript file. <clears throat> and then we are gonna load, um, create the first part of the experiment. Um, we're gonna put it after the body. It doesn't matter where you put it. And we're gonna <clears throat> close it. So this is where we are gonna start creating <clears throat> the whole experiment. So you know, in experiments, there are instructions. If we have the welcome page, <clears throat> welcome page, we have instructions. We have practice trials. <clears throat> and we have the feedback for practice trials, or we have the experimental instructions to remind them what the experiment is about. Let's put it <clears throat> experiment instructions. And then we have the experimental trials, mental trials, and then we have the debrief. <clears throat> so we're gonna comment that um, into sections. What you can, what how comment works is double slash, or there's a shortcut. It's called it's um, control plus slash. Okay, for Mac. I think in Windows is control plus slash gives you this. Mac, maybe it's CMD, could be CMD. CMD plus slash equals dollar backslash. There's another type of command, um, comment, which is the slash asterisk and Asterisk slash. So this is for block command, block comment commenting. <coughs> so when you when you want to comment a section or a few lines of code, you can use this. And the shortcut for that is control plus shift plus slash. Can okay, or command command. So you have let's say a few lines of code, highlight them, control shift and that's how you comment. And now it's commented. And what we have in JS site is also the timeline, which you, which is, which actually means the blocks of code or the screens that you're going to show here in all these few lines. So first we're going to create a variable called timeline. This is an array. So it's right now it's empty. We are not gonna put anything inside, but we're gonna populate it with all these screens later on. <clears throat> and then start the experiment or initialize the experiment. So how we do that is js side dot init. So that's the initialize experiment. And we have the timeline which tells this function um, what are the timeline or what are the screens that you're going to show in uh, in order, and and it's going to it's going to get from here. So timeline, and we put a comma because it is a list. So this is this parenthesis is quite different from the bracket. So parenthesis comes in a um, key and value, key, value, but um, in uh, up in an, in an array, it's just up, an object, 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 something like that. So we're gonna use both. Um, it's good to know when to use what and because JSI uses both. And let's see. Remember that at the end of the experiment just now, that the example it shows the screen. So this 
is this happens when the whole experiment finishes. So in JSI.init, there is JS on finish. We are going to um, show the screen. So we call it, it's, I think it's called JS sign.data.getData .data display data. So right now we have our first um, part of the script. Let's just clean up these white spaces. So right now we have nothing here. So if you run it, oh, we are running a wrong one. Uh, we need to, let's see. Let's close this, let's close this. We are going to run index.html. So right now it's empty. You can see there is a black spot here. Let's not bother about that. <clears throat> So let's um, create our first welcome screen. So in an experiment, you will welcome a participant in the first screen, and then they'll press a button to continue to the next screen. So what we want here is, let's see. It's not instructions, because instructions are for the next part. So we either want them to respond by the key press or a button. Since we are doing it online, we do want participants to press a button without reading to the, the instructions properly. So we want to use this. So let's create a variable called welcome block. Oops, so it's variable name of the variable and this is an object with parameters with keys so the keys here corresponds to what um, these parameters are but first we need um, the program to know that we are calling this is this variable is HTML response button. So the type of um, function or the type of object that we're going to create is the HTML response. And then we're going to populate it with the parameters, which are the stimulus, charges. There are many things we can choose from. HTML button, prompts, stimulus duration, trial duration, margins, and response and trials. So along with each parameter, there are descriptions. On, on what this parameter does. For example, um, choices, labels for the buttons. So this is the button and this is the text for the button. So we want the choices. And the stimulus is the H H HTML string to be displayed. So I think this is more like the text um, that comes before the button. And prom is anything that comes under the button. And let's see, do we need trial duration? How long to show the trial? No, we don't because we want them to read the instructions or at least um, get prepared before they click next or continue. So we don't need any of those. So we need stimulus, choices, and prompt. So stimulus, choices, Choices or choice? Choices. Yep. And let's see, choices. Choices is an array. So this is an array. So let's put it in an array. And we have the prompt. We have prompt. Oh, prompt under, under, we don't need this. So we need two. Stimulus is the text to be displayed. So let's say, welcome. To the experiment. And the choices are, click here to continue. 
Then remember at the end of the verbal, put a semicolon. I think I've never have, have not said this, but um, every time um, you write a variable or write a code, you would have to put a semicolon. It is like a period in the sentence, but in a list like this, and then you put a comma, cause it's a pair, it's a next item on a list, it's a next item on a list. But for general script coding, you put a semicolon. So right now we have our first um, variable, we have our first block or the first screen, we need to add it to the timeline by typing timeline.push, which means it's adding push means to add welcome this argument inside push to the timeline. And then we can feed the timeline to the timeline here. And then we have our first um, code. So let's, let's run it and see what comes up. So nothing comes up yet. Let's see. Um, so if something happens unexpectedly like this, you can press F12 and you can see no plugin loaded. I'm not sure how to um, increase the size here. But it says no plugin loaded for trolls over here. So that's the problem here. Uh, we have no plugin or no JavaScript added here. So let's take a look. Yeah, so we haven't added the um, plugin. So we need to add a plugin, which is over here. So HTML, right click. I'm gonna copy the path and paste it. There we go, this should work. And now we have the experiment uh, over here. But you see that um, it is on the top left. What we want normally is to have it in the middle of the screen. So we can do that um, with CSS. So that's the idea of CSS, is to de um, decorate or beautify your entire screen or your entire HTML code. So we do this by a link. And the link, it's a link. So the link is denoted by href CSS. So we have the CSS-JS, JS site.css. And this is the, uh, it's a style sheet. And let's see. So the type is a text.css. So it should work. And now let's check. And there we go, we have the, our first um, screen, our first part of the experiment. So we get to continue and then we see, um, I took 10 seconds to respond to the first page. And then we have all the data of the first page. We have the button press, we'll go through later what these numbers mean. And the trial type is the type HTML response button, trial index, which is this screen number, how much time has passed, internal note IDs for general usage. But more importantly, it doesn't show you this is a welcome screen. We want to know this is a welcome screen so we don't get confused with what is an instruction, what is a welcome screen, what is a trial. So we need to add um, the data type to know that this is a, this type of data or this is this belongs to a welcome screen. So we can do that by data and we add um, so screen ID. So this is a welcome. And then comma. So let's run it again. And now we see, we still don't see, but um, yes, we see it here. Screen ID, this is a welcome screen. So there you go. This is our first part of the tutorial where you learn how to create your first part of the experiment. In the next part, we will learn how to create instructions and maybe some practice trials. 
So tune in to the next session of our tutorial.